All right, so um, let me try it this way. So uh, somebody had asked about uh, coil harvesting. Um, this was the the Memphis 12 uh, that we saw. It's, a, it's got a little bit of rubbing on the inside, but the, the outside of the coil is in really good shape. And basically what you need to do is just remove this information uh, or material, I should say, uh, to get down to the, this is called the spun lace Nomex, this white stuff, this white tape. Uh, once you get down to that, that's, you're done. And then uh, from there, uh, you basically solder again the leads uh, to the voice coil leads to the wires and um, Sometimes you can you can take off a couple of layers or I shouldn't say layers, but windings uh, uh, to, to get more wire uh, to what you need sometimes you can't because of uh, The location of the wire sometimes the layers are um, underneath one another and so you're kind of stuck there was a client that I had couple of months back uh, he got really pissed at me because we couldn't recover um, this uh, I think this is CT sounds this is a uh, on their super duper 10 it's an eight layer and it's kind of a weird two and a half inch coil and nobody makes it and um, we couldn't find a, a replacement for it and uh, and I kept trying to get underneath it but uh, when I would pull the because it's aluminum, well, it would break as, for if it was copper too, but uh, just kept breaking and I couldn't get underneath the layers without having to remove more layers on top. So he got kind of pissed at me. So these are ones that we had uh, ground. Uh, the boys had gotten uh, a little bit. Sometimes I save them just for reference. Um, sometimes I save them for um, uh, like emergency backup. Like if I don't have one, you know, at least I have this one. Uh, I do save a lot of the Sunfire ones. Typically, um, the Sunfire uh, subs die uh, from the suspension, uh, not from the coil burning up. Uh, typically, you just can't burn them up. Um, the amplifier's not strong enough, um, and the soft parts give out first. So, not that, that they're bad, just, you know, that's what gives out first. Plus, uh, some of this stuff, this is a uh, old TC Sounds uh, one that we did. This had the aluminum cone bonded to it. Uh, I, I like to also save it uh, as part of the library. Sometimes uh, I like to see how um, people solve problems. Um, uh, again, subscribe to a lot of the stuff that Elon Musk talks about and uh, solving problems is uh, really where the magic's at. This is a Sunfire 10, still intact. You can see these are the leads that they use. They actually only use one side too. There are leads on the other side, but they're not connected to anything. Um, which I thought was kind of dumb, kind of a waste, but you know, the, the woofer's only made to last a year, even though Sunfire would charge like $800 for it. So, but um, there's a couple of methods you can use too, uh, to, uh, what do you call it? Um, remove that material. I like to use uh, compressed air on an angle grinder. Um, this is one I found, uh, on Facebook actually it was advertised it doesn't have a safety which is fine with me it's a little dangerous sometimes uh, like when you're trying to change this and then you accidentally touch that and erase your fingerprints but um, uh, this uses I we use a Rolock uh, Rolock system is separate uh, and invented by 3m and then uh, these are generic uh, ones that we get locally from uh, Tempe abrasives and they worked really great and they're like a fraction of the cost of the 3m ones so um, I think that's it for coil harvesting. I, I, I don't know if you can see them over there. There's, there's always plenty of coils to harvest that where something goes wrong on them and uh, you know, they're not very pretty to look at by any means. But uh, when you get them in there and they work fine, it's kind of hard to argue uh, with the price uh, being free or already paid for, or, you know, whatever. So, but, um, we're still doing the Neo harvest. Um, we're pretty much done with the Neo motors. Um, I gotta find out, I gotta figure out too now what is Neo and what isn't. Um, and then if we have enough to make uh, uh, Curtis Navarro's uh, Mega 
15. Oh, here he is. He was playing with these earlier. Uh, we're going to, this is a, uh, MTX 9,500, uh, T yoke. Uh, I was unsatisfied with how tall it was. Um, most of it, it's actually empty space inside of it. Um, and what we're so we, uh, extended it a little bit and then, uh, I glued on the, uh, I think I drilled and tapped the, the cooler. This is the, what do you call this? Pole topper, uh, on top. Just, uh, it's so the, the coil can actually stay aligned and it also keeps it cool. It doesn't really keep it cool, but it looks cool, whatever. So I think we're going to do a couple of columns. Uh, this part is actually the Neo from, uh, Rockford T1, um, slim. And, uh, and then this is a, a steel puck from, uh, oh, I found the, the motors. This is from the, um, this is called S max from uh, Serwin Vega, the Serwin Vega Stealth. Um, I'll take you over there real quick. Um, I got those and I got a shit ton of these. Um, uh, oh, there's the box, the wet sounds. So a Dyer, when we bought out a lot of their inventory back in 07, when Dan had sold the brand of, what's his name? That dickhead from Hemp Audio. Um, we, I guess they forgot or whatever somebody maybe somebody didn't pay but these are some uh <clears throat> neo motors that they used in some of their wet sounds components and they're really powerful really big thick slug uh slug of neo that um here it is uh slug of neo oh you can't really see it in there this is a mid base that i created uh, uh to see if we could even do it uh, i wanted to do a shallow mount mid base but it, as it turns out the cost it's actually cheaper just to pay somebody else to do it. So what I'm going to do is actually use the, here's the other version. We're going to do a six and a half. Um, it's actually cheaper just to get China to make it, even uh, the, even if it's Neo. Uh, but this is the Neo slug right here, and then the rest of this is steel. But um, yeah, the, those motors were made back before the price of Neo went through the roof. Uh, let's see here. Oh, by the way, it wasn't because uh, uh, neodymium is called rare earth, but it's not very rare. It's actually pretty common. Most of the mining is done in uh, Canada, where they mine the raw materials, and then they ship them over to China, where they're processed uh, chemically. A lot of the chemicals that they use are not very environmentally friendly, but in China, they don't give a shit. So that's why another reason why China is able to dominate that market. <clears throat> Here's one of the... Uh, uh, this is the wet sounds motor and then I don't know if you can see it there. That's the uh, S max the uh, Serwin Vega stealth uh, Motor of course all these are just jumbled together and so they got to be pulled apart and then we got to put them on the uh, the heater to separate uh, the steel from the the neo and then once the the neo is um, Heated up enough to its curry point then um, we can actually use it. It doesn't hurt it at all. It just sort of uh, makes it not magnetized anymore. And uh, really that's the only way to demagnetize anything. I don't know why. I, well, I kind of do know why. There's, there's certain machines that say magnetize, demagnetize. They're in, they're in industrial purposes. And it's, if it's for a very specific thing, it actually works pretty good because you know what the value is going to be in order to demagnetize something. The problem is, is that in subwoofers, that doesn't exist. Um, you don't know, I think I mentioned this briefly in another video, you don't know exactly how powerful the motor is magnetized because when you magnetize these motors, you want to saturate it, meaning you want to exceed what it can actually do. Um, and that's so that it's fully, what they call fully saturated, uh, meaning the, the, the amount of uh, ferritic material, I hope that's a word, um, is, uh, completely charged. Um, you don't want to leave anything on the table. So all those, uh, Ken Brown, uh, at it, uh, um, he worked it for ultra audio, George Campos out of there of, uh, Sacramento. That's what it's called. Um, they were experimenting with, um, you know, like ch charging magnets at different voltages in order to get certain results. 
and uh, you, which you can do. Um, I personally, I think it's kind of a waste. The other way to do it is the what I saw with uh, what Dan Wiggins was doing with the uh, Dyer project at the time. This was back in 06, 07, was uh, he would make the gap larger, which is another way to do it. Um, sometimes, uh, you know, you can actually get too much BL. Uh, what happens is the, the woofer performs very peaky. The Q is very steep. Uh, and it like, it sort of becomes like, like super on or it's like super off. And so if you can kind of control that, it kind of, um, it performs better. It does need a bigger box, but, uh, that's a good compromise if the, if the woofer is going to have a larger pass band. So, um, I think I've waited long enough for these to cure Well, we've been, it's not cold, cold, but in Phoenix, when it gets below 50 degrees, people freak the fuck out. And, uh, the epoxy is, uh, it doesn't cure the way it's supposed to. Here's that, uh, Rockford one that we're going to zap. That one's going to be fun. So that'll make somebody happy. Um, I'm just, I'm, we had, uh, we had one of the, things touch another wire and a big old zoop, zoop, zoop. um i'm just i don't know i'm just re still recovering over the covid and i don't like i don't like this machine man it's fucking violent and uh when you're making that steel jump and do all kinds of weird shit it's just dangerous and my feet hurt from uh just walking the dogs man uh i don't know Anyways, uh, I got to do those today. Um, we'll talk more. You guys have been great. I'm glad you like these videos. Um, again, send me your technical questions and I'll do my best to answer them.